Hi friends, I'm Olga Kirsch and welcome to my studio. I received this set of 24 watercolors paints uh, by Paul Rubens for testing. Um, the company promised that this watercolor paint is made with ultra pure pigments uh, that won't become muddy when they mixed with high transparency, which is very important for my painting technique because I'm painting transparent flowers and uh, that they are rich and intense. So I'm very curious to test it out. Very pleasant box. Colors are placed in this metal box. Um, it's my favorite shape and amount. I think 24 colors is way enough for painting. What is very convenient that each pen has a description, not only on Chinese, but also in English, so everyone can understand. The color career is Rebic Gim, um, which uh, will create this matte finish on the top of watercolors. Uh, they show um, weathering resistance, five stars, which is uh, great. Uh, that means your artwork will be safe even on daylight for hundreds of years. The palette is organized in my favorite way from yellows um, according to rainbow colors and then um, the last ones are the earthy tones. I will start testing with yellows. The most important colors in every set are yellows, reds and blues because they are the points of this um, triad, the main colors which allows you to create a lot of different mixes and of course it would be interesting to try different shades uh, the first <laughs> the first paint in the palette is Naples yellow which I think is a relatively weird choice for the set which promise uh, high transparency because Naples yellow has uh, full coverage and it has white in um, its ingredients which um, makes it more like a gouache than a transparent watercolor. But let's test. So it's very easy. It very easy goes into the brush, which I really like. But, and I can feel that it, it's, it's a bit of gouache feeling, very dense color. I will, I will try on this paper. It has three pigments in um, in it, white, as I said, yellow, and a little bit of red, which makes it uh, very warm. Once it dry, it's actually still relatively transparent. I can see some potential for yellow flowers, for example, when you need some intensity. Then more traditional, it's lemon yellow, one pigment color, PY3 very light and bright again it goes into the brush very easy very uh, gives very pleasant feeling and it's super bright <laughs> even a little bit neon uh, very cold yellow I yellow is yellow i i can confirm that this is very transparent we can't um, estimate the volume for yellow colors. Um, it's very short difference between their darkest part and the lightest part. Uh, next yellow is cadmium yellow light, also one pigment, PY35. It's um, half transparent, they say. In the palette, they look identical like uh, identical twins. Let's have a look. What's the difference? Mm. It's more intense, I would say, and a little bit warmer, just a little bit warmer, but not enough to create a very big difference. Cadmium yellow, yellow light, mm, usually I think it's a little bit warmer. 
I don't see big difference between those two colors. I think you can use one of those for, for your yellows. So next one is Chromium Yellow Hue Deep. One pigment color, yellow 65, uh, full transparency goes into the brush pretty nice pretty convenient again very bright almost neon color i have uh, i i have a feeling that it is not as transparent i would say it's very bright can be relatively deep and dark for orange colors uh, just one yellow pigment uh, means that it will be uh, mixing with blues it may have a green tone next one chromium orange um, high to transparency This is very bright. All colors are, uh, I can see it now, they're really very pure. It has very fine structure. And I want to test it on a bigger piece of paper to see how, how large will be the value scale from darkest to lightest. But I will write it down that this is E O sixty two orange. I like this very wide range of oranges. Cadmium red light, one pigment and full coverage. Usually uh, red you expect from red colors. You expect them to be very bright and staying bright after they uh, after colors dry. Let's test it out. I like the beginning. It's um, clearly very bright. I I will use bigger piece of paper. It has a little bit of soapy effect on it. And it's not super bright, super dark, I'm sorry, super dark. It is nice. It's not, um, uh, it's not very deep red. You wouldn't be able to uh, paint very deep shades, very big, deep contrast uh, with this red color. But it has, even despite it was called uh, full coverage, um, it feels um relatively transparent but it will work only for light parts of of the flowers i think it's easier to test on this piece of paper but i will keep to how i started berlin maroon interesting mm, name and color i like the color already here so we move into pink pink part of the palette very pleasant to get on the brush this color now it's it's deep mm, nice burgundy um, idea in this and for pinks usually you pink uh, use pinks pink colors to add shades cold shades into the flowers and in mixes they also they make um, shades or contrast very deep so from pinks I expect them to be dark in their darkest part and be able to stretch up to very up to very light. Quinacridone rose. Uh, very curious about this one because quinacridone rose, I think uh, it's the color I use most of all. And this looks pretty dark here.
yes it's bright and cold it's actually what uh, usually we expect from quinacridone rose it's um bright cold color let's test whether it is dark enough um it's pretty light one um in its darkest point it's pretty light it uh, will make a little bit difficult to make enough of contrast even with mixes what I like, it has very wide, long range of values. So this is Quinacridone Maroon, one pigment, violet pigment. Um, let's have a look. It's even more colder than Quinacridone Rose and it's deeper in the, in its darker part very bright uh, with bright these neon looking colors it's very important to check the weather resistance for stars um, it's relatively okay because um, weather resistance is important for exhibition for exhibition or when you're selling your art originals so they uh, pictures can be on a daylight for many years without changing the color what I see on a bigger piece of paper, it's um, intense, um, very, very light. Mm, not as concentrated as I see here. You, you see on small um, swatches, it's, um, it looks a bit different when you use um, bigger, bigger pieces of paper. With this quinacridone maroon, it has violet pigment in it. Usually violet is not very stable, weather resistant, uh, sun resistant. And it looks like a, a very popular color, opera rose, which is uh, very bright pink, great for mixing, uh, but you have to be careful. Um, sometimes it can dissolve on the sunlight but that we can test out after dozens and tens of years so um, if you paint for digital prints if you paint uh, for pleasure for um, some small exhibitions where your artwork is not exposed on the sunshine this is pretty pretty good pretty nice next one <laughs> <laughs> Dioxacin uh, Violet, which will be the last in our pink palette, because although it looks like blue, it has violet pink pigment in it. Looks very, very dark, and usually violets we, we use for adding shades, for creating contrast, for making the previous colors more intense. So, there. It is very intense. It is very intense. And let's see how it will work on a bigger piece of paper. It is very intense. Maybe on, on a bigger scale, you see it's um, not very so deep dark on the darker side but it's it has very nice big potential with violets it's important to see whether it is more blue or whether it is more pink and this is clearly more pink which um, allow you to create very beautiful mixes with cold um, with cold pinks with um, oranges it um, can create very pleasant grayish um, shades now let's test blues so my camera was out of space when i was talking and talking so i will just start from the beginning and i will uh, do testing in a little bit different order than they suggested i will start with tallow blue which has a uh, blue pigment 15 by 3 and when we see this uh, divide 
number it means it wouldn't be very dark usually uh, phthalo blue is one of very important colors because it's um, the basic color it's one of the corners of triad and uh, let's see how it looks like i think it has a little bit of greenish um tone under it and yes it is not very dark usually phthalo, phthalo blue should be very very dark to create the uh, the deep contrast in values but um it's very transparent it's very saturated bright clean color would be great for mixes and for delicate flowers painting the next color is berlin blue with one blue pigment pb27 very dark in the pen and it is very beautiful grayish grayish blue uh, I like uh, if you are quite long with me you know I have a tendency to dusty palette and I I think this can be one of my favorite blues or I even might substitute uh, the super bright phthalo blue with this uh, PB27 Berlin blue mm, and I think that this color would be great for monochrome paintings uh, in transparent technique I see a lot of a lot of potential in it it's um, I think it will be similar for the rest of the palette with these colors. They are not dark enough in their darkest points, but for painting delicate flowers, it doesn't matter. It um, will make difference if you paint, for example, sea landscapes, um, skies, etc. Next one I will test. Uh, they call it French blue, but it has blue 20, uh, 29 pigment which is ultramarine blue as um, how maybe the most known name <laughs> you see once i dilute, dilute the pen it uh, gets very bright from ultramarine blue we usually expect some granulation i'm very curious to see will it be present here um <laughs> again <laughs> maybe not very deep and it has a little bit of bubbles in it a little bit soapy and a little bit of bubbles which um, usually tells us that the color wouldn't be very intense it will perfectly fit for light painting painting of light flowers light sky um, but you would not be able to create deep uh, contrasts now let's observe um, the granulation yes i uh, once it starts to dry i can see the particles are pushing out to test granulation um, you need to add a little bit more of water because this granulated effect works better with water because particles they uh, push each other and they run <laughs> out of each other and that creates this granulated effect uh, very beautiful bright color <laughs> probably i said it al already 12 14 times now let's test indigo indigo usually it's a mix of blue pigment with black pigment but here i see that it will be another blue pigment pb66 from indigo we expect it to be very dark because of the blue pigment and it's supposed to be very dark in its darkest point. I can see, yes, uh, it's probably the darkest one out of all blues. 
Let's try to stretch it a little bit. I think it has very nice scale values from dark to light. I like this color very much. It has very delicate, deep grayish tone, cold and rich. I think it would be great uh, also for monochrome paintings, adding shades, um, adding some details when you do not want to use black. If you use this indigo, it will make your painting more sophisticated. So I think I, I will take this into my regular palette, this indigo. The last one from blue sector, or it can be also in the green sector, will be turquoise, uh, translucent turquoise. Um, usually it is a mix of tallow blue and viridian color. And here we have just one blue 16 pigment, which makes it very, very pure, very clean, very... Um, bright and saturated and um, as usual uh, we see that colors are very transparent it's very difficult to make them dark but it's ver uh, very easy to make to dilute them and to create very pale translucent colors beautiful color would be great for seascapes uh, tends to go into the green cold um, spectrum beautiful one and as all these colors right now I, I I think I can see that colors probably will be the same for all um, they can't be too dark but they create really beautiful, pure, translucent, translucent variations. Now let's uh, test green part. First one will be oriental green. Or, um, usually we refer to this PG7 pigment as viridian or emerald green. All these colors, they go into, into the brush very easy without um, applying too much of pressure. Just one, two gentle touches and your brush is full, uh, full of paints. Yes, it is very bright, cold green. This PG, uh, um, PG7 pigment is the basic of all greens because adding uh, pinks or yellows or blues, you can create a very wide range of green shades, deep pink shades, olive shades. So um, you, in principle, need just this one color, PG7. I miss, again, I miss a little bit um, intensity, darkness in this color. As I see, uh, it's really the strong part of these paints. It's their transparency and very pure, delicate, delicate powder which uh, they use for, for paints. Usually um, you very rarely paint with this pure paint. It works great with mixes. Now comes May Green. May Green consists of two pigments, yellow, Y151 and PG7, the previous one. As I said, this is your basic green and mixing it with all the rest of your palette, you will get a lot of beautiful shades. But anyway, let's test this. This is very neon, bright, extremely bright green. Um, can be great for fresh spring greenery 
for example, for some accents or if you paint in this style of neon bright painting, that, that would be great. Also for tropical, for tropical designs, I can see it uh, for mm, tropical fruits, limes, palms, palm leaves. I may have an unpopular opinion. I like to have ready green mixes in my palette um, because sometimes it allows you to have to paint in consistent color and sometimes it is necessary. And next one will be Cobalt Tokyo's Dark. And this Cobalt Tokyo's Dark, it's just one green pigment, 26. Um, where was this? This was Tokyo's based on blue pigment. Now I'm very curious to see how the Cobalt Tokyo's Dark will look like. It looks like an emerald green in the, in the pen. Before I start, I want to check one thing. It promises us full coverage, not transparent, full coverage. And it really feels like this. Um, in Windsor & Newton palette, I think it, a similar color calls cobalt green. This is nice. I, I think it even might have some, um, some granulated effect it's a little bit soapy it's in my favorite dusty dusty shades yes i already here in the middle of of my swatch i can see that it is very granu granulated colors color which can be very nice for um, some abstract painting, some loose painting, maybe not for painting transparent in transparent technique, but when you paint loose flowers, that could be very, very nice, pleasant, mm, pleasant green color, cold green. It's clearly cold, we tends uh, to bluish. And the last from the greens, olive green dark olive green um, there are different options to create olive color uh, sometimes you mix black and yellows and here we have orange and green it's pigment orange 64 and our favorite pg7 so and what we will get looks dark goes very easy into the brush it's uh, pretty enjoyable so it's it's very interesting color mm, because it's maybe not that olive as you expect uh, traditional olives they more in the yellow spectrum they tends to be more yellowish and this is a little bit it feels like a dusty green color sagey green color let's try how green i want to check i forgot to check semi coverage but it feels uh, it feels pretty dark and Actually, this type of green you can use as it is to paint some greenery leaves. If you do not want to paint that bright or that bright, you more you tense more to dusty, more natural feelings. I think this is this is really beautiful green. I I like it very very much. I expected something completely different black feeling but without using black pigment very um very 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 interesting color and you see when you extend it in the light part it's very pure it's nothing about olives um but it gives you very fresh mint green even mint green now you see that it's more in the cold spectrum actually than in the warm 
Now we are starting to test the earthy colors of the palette and actually the Napoli yellow color we tested the first one also can be part of an earthy palette because of its semi-opaque and a little bit of dim effect. Uh, earthy colors they use to dim, to desaturate your paintings. Usually they work with mixes and this um, earth yellow with PY yellow pigment 42 and um, you might heard it as a raw sienna. I guess it will be something similar but it is very bright raw sienna very warm, sandy, beach, <laughs> even tropical feeling in it. Uh, usually um, sienna or earthy colors, they are a little bit dusty, desaturated, as I said. They are supposed to be used in mixes to mute a little bit your color. Mm supposed to be semi coverage uh, and it feels it feels pretty transparent actually very nice scale from dark to light point next one will be burnt sienna with um, it's um, two pigments in it red one and black one black one right so let's test it i uh, i use burnt sienna very very often in mixes with greens and in mixes with pinks uh, with greens it creates um, very deep rich greens and with pinks it adds depth and create very um, complex, interesting, sophisticated mixes, vintage mixes. So if you paint more in a uh, dusty vintage style, um, you probably already use a lot of burnt sienna. It's again, it's very bright. It's unusually bright. Um, and... Um, Yes, it, it feels uh, very nice. It feels like fresh bricks, clay. Um, I think this color has a great potential with mixes with each, uh, with the rest of the palette. Next one, Venetian red, full coverage. And it will be one pigment red from this same pigment, but just single just alone let's see looks like a piece of clay or small brick which is how it's supposed to be um, yes it's clearly more red i think i i can feel some granulation in it and it's it feels pretty dense Yes, you, you can paint it pretty dense, but it's also it's um, quite bright color, and that's a little bit um, confusing to me, because for example, if we have a look on pinks when they dry, they all get a little bit of um, desaturated, and earthy tones, which are supposed to be desaturated to dim the main bright colors, they look very bright. So it's a little bit <laughs> opposite to how um, it's usually we used to be. I'm pretty sure um, you can make beautiful mixes or use it as a main tone for some autumn, autumn vintage moods. So this Venetian red, just be careful because it's uh, pretty dense 
and um, if you apply too much it uh, it looks a bit gouache next one will be brown umber semi coverage we are getting to the very dark points and this uh, has three pigments in it a little bit of blue red oh uh, sorry it is black Pebeka uh, stays for black pigment seven and one more black black nine let's see it it is very dark and a little bit greenish maybe in in it umber mm. so it's almost almost black but with a green undertone on it um yes you can you you can make it pretty dark you can this brown umber it has a slightly greenish undertone with this which will be great for mixing and dimming desaturating all these cold green palette it it's surprisingly very transparent and it applies very softly so i think this color uh, will be a basic uh, from deep browns deep earthy tones for making beautiful mixes and what i would like to try now i would like to test and uh, um, create olive green as i said oli olive greens um, sometimes it's some um, more ancient technology to mix yellows with earthy tones with umber for example so let's use our yellow you see now we are getting these green olive that's what i expected um, from olive green you remember when we tested olive green i said i expected something different i expected something more like this now let's have a look on a piece of paper yes the, the, this is very nice a little bit dusty olive green and um, what I see that the colors mix uh, very nicely, very tender, no granulation, no particles, separation between them. They mix, I would say, perfectly. <laughs> very, very nice, very nice way. So now we have the last one, ivory black. Let's have a look. Semi coverage one pigment black P P B K nine same what was in the previous one in umber it's it feels a bit watery here um very neutral cold cold black so <laughs> you see the math um, you add to this black you leave, you add a little bit of warm tone blue you get this slightly greenish um, i want to test how dark it can be it's actually pretty transparent <laughs> usually uh, blacks use to make colors deeper for example and make them more complicated complex for example i can see a nice mix with this perlin maroon so um nice blue neutral or oh, nice black neutral black uh, wide range to sum it up i think uh, I like very much the texture of the colors. They all very soft, very delicate into the brush. It's very easy to apply them. 
uh, I think this is a very nice experience. They do not have enough darkness in this, which is completely fine. For example, uh, if you paint as, as me in transparent technique, for my transparent technique, I think that would be perfect. I am looking forward to try it on an actual painting. If you paint some landscapes, moody landscapes or seascapes, uh, then you might not have enough of darkness. So um, it depends on what are you actually painting. Um, for del delicate botanical illustration, I think it's it's really it's really nice. I see some very interesting colors in it. Um, uh, in this indigo, this green, uh, this blue. Uh, pinks I need to test in uh, in the real painting. Very beautiful palette, earthy tones, uh, very bright, very intense. Uh, I think these, the, this was very interesting testing. I hope you like it. I hope it was helpful for you as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful. If you would like to know more about paints, what, how to read the etiquette of paints, what to pay attention when you choose your paints, or any related art-related questions, uh, just text me in comments. I read each and every comment, and I'm very thankful for your great feedback and your support. See you next time. Bye-bye.